On behalf of the motion picture industry, welcome to the world of home video entertainment. The Mangler, 1995, a horror film which was billed at the time of its release as kind of the meeting of three masters, based on a short story by Stephen King, starring Robert England, of course, of The Nightmare on Elm Street, Freddy himself in some more complex makeup, and directed by Toby Hooper of Poltergeist. And of course, he's no stranger to Stephen King adaptations, of course, uh, coming from Salem's Lot. Uh, the, the Mangler is, is a movie which doesn't really have a high profile. It, I mean, it, it wasn't a huge success, I think, in its initial release. I don't remember if I saw it theatrically. I believe I did. I believe I did see it in the theaters. Um, but I, I remember it more so for its excellent VHS release, the VHS cover art, and then the Laserdisc cover art, which was the same thing. I remember I eventually bought the Laserdisc from uh, a, an ex-rental from Blockbuster. And I, I've loved the movie throughout the years. To me, it's, it's one of my favorite 90s horror films. It's a, it's a, to me, it's just this gothic tone, the strange gothic tone, um, the, 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 the stylistic touches that Toby Hooper uh, puts into it, the uh, performances are across the board. Ted Levine is this main character, this kind of flawed, you know, uh, policeman, kind of the, the kind of the, the, the private detective with the trench coat, kind of with his own uh, addictions and complexes, working through it, unraveling uh, the, the mysteries of, of, um, of this uh, of this small town that he lives in, because the film takes place in the in a small New England town, like most Stephen King stories. Which this town is dominated by this industrial uh, laundry factory, which is run by Bill Gartley, uh, this kind of old man with with leg braces, played by, of course, Robert England in this incredible age makeup and uh, this this factory is dominated by the mangler which is this, this industrial uh, laundry folder just this e evil monstrous machine and a machine which is actually designed by Toby Hooper's son William Hooper I didn't know that and uh, and so there starts to be these murders, these, uh, you know, the, the Bill Gartley doesn't seem to think a lot of it. He says, you know, you've, you know, in order to have a success, you've got to break a few eggs. You've got to have a few sacrifices. And so it, it, it uh, we, we go on this, this, this trek unraveling the, the esoteric, uh, demonic origins of the Mangler and uh, all the people who surround it this whole town seems to be into this idea of literally a blood blood sacrifice uh, I mean just a great gothic tale told very in very much real time it's this it's this very much running through the night story of, of, of Ted Levine's character um, with uh, his his uh, his his sidekick Daniel uh, Matt Moore, I believe is his name, uh, this uh, character actor, as the the brother-in-law who is this kind of into the uh, occult and 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 who is who is well who who knows very very clearly on hey. He says the mangler might be possessed, <laughs> and uh, I, I mean I just think it's a great story. It's a great little movie, a great horror film, and uh, I can't I can't really find a fault in it. The performances, everything. Uh, it, it was obscure for many years, difficult to find. Uh, eventually released by New Line Cinema on on DVD but it was not released in its uncut version because there was a cut version from the VHS days. There was, a, there was an R-rated version and there was the uncut, the director's cut version. 
and uh, n not a lot of differences. I mean, just mainly some blood stuff. Uh, we see people going through the mangler and getting getting all mangled up, and just a few extra bits of of gore and absurd because there's a lot of absurd gore. I mean, there are there is an element of black humor in this film. And uh, it's put forward by the uh, the screenwriter who does a commentary track on the Blu-ray that he he all, he makes a point uh, to uh, point out that there were a couple of shots at the beginning of the film that were cut that he felt was very critical to people's um, understanding of the the comedic element that there were these shots of the old woman who gets mangled at the beginning. There were shots of her watch, uh, which was there was going to be there was going to be a close up of her bloodied uh, of watch, which was went through the the mangler and and it was a, it was going to display the, the the logo of the watch a Timex, and it was still going to be working, which was obviously a <laughs> a a, uh, a reference to uh, you know keeps a lick and uh, it takes a lick and keeps on ticking the Timex uh, commercial slogan. So a little bit of a humor uh, humorous element, and he felt like when they cut that stuff later on in the, in the edit, it wasn't an R rated versus an unrated. They cut it in the unrated as well. But he felt when they cut that, it kind of the audience didn't w didn't really quite know. They didn't really have a quite of a license to to laugh at some of this. And it is absurd. I mean, this idea of the this this gigantic thing uh, is this, this this mangler device. I mean. The film, um, Bill, it has its own world. I mean, it feels like it. it I, I, and I felt like this way because the, the film was always mysterious to me. I mean, it was a, it was Toby Hooper's last film they released that got a theatrical release. Uh, this is 1995. After this, he would make a bunch of other movies. He would take a long break and then. Uh, come out with the Toolbox Murders. He he directed a a remake of the Toolbox Murders, and uh, that was that that movie had a to the Toolbox Murders had a torturous production history. At one point, um, Jim Van Beber was involved in the Toolbox Murders. I I, uh, I you know I don't I mean, and um uh, um, to, um Jim Van Beber and and the guy um, uh, Dave Shulkin, right? I think Dave Shulkin and Jim Avera were doing that, but eventually it went to Toby Hooper, and um, and uh, he 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 directed that, and then Mortuary, and then episodes of Masters of Horror, episodes of television series, but he never really got a, a big theatrical release after The Mangler. And it's a and it, and it was a weird and and the movie is just full of these actors who you never, you know, where these actors come from, where they go, they're very, you know, you never. I mean, the the, the I mean, of course, Ted Levine and 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 um, and Robert Englund, of course, you know them, and but the rest of the cast is is really kind of mysterious. And and then I realized when I uh, saw this new special edition uh, Blu-ray, uh, they started talking about how the film was shot in South Africa. And uh, that you know, really, it everything clicked in in my mind, because uh, they do a really good job. I mean, the whole film was shot, uh, the the whole Mangler uh, industrial laundry set. The interior was constructed on a, in a warehouse in South Africa, and they shot the exteriors in South Africa. And uh, they talk about in the. Um, in the commentary, how they found the the one strip of houses that didn't have like uh, 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 barbed wire and 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 high walls <laughs> in front of them, they they found the one area that kind of looked like uh, looked like uh, uh, some some place in, in North America to shoot the exteriors of of Ted Levine's house in that area. But I mean, the, the film, the production design, William Hooper, uh, the, the art directors, they created this world which it doesn't, it, it, it feels kind of out of time. I mean, I, I think shooting in South Africa was a real advantage of finding this young, this, this different talent. Uh, I mean, the, the actors in this film were a, a lot of South African actors. Uh, a lot of really high-level South African actors, or and also people who had been who had worked on 
producer Harry Allen Towers, other films which have been shot in South Africa, Canon films have been making films in South Africa, uh, you know, action films and stuff. So they had a pool of talent to pull from in South Africa that was really strong, yet was people that you don't really see. Uh, in, in a lot of films, you know, if you'd shot this film in, in Canada or in uh, Los Angeles, you would see a lot of actors who, you know, you'd seen in, in other films, you'd seen people from David Cronenberg films or, you know, such and such films. You, you, you start, oh, familiar faces. And you don't have those familiar faces in this film, which I think works to the advantage. Uh, and, and the way it looks, which is, it, it feels like, again, this gothic sensibility, out of place, out of time. It looks kind of like a New England town, but then it kind of doesn't. It doesn't look like um, Los Angeles, or it doesn't look like um, uh, New England exactly, and it doesn't look like Toronto either. You know, films that are shot in, in Canada or Toronto, they have a certain kind of look. And according to uh, Robert England, they were eventually they were they were originally planning to shoot this film in Toronto, uh, but because of the producers and uh, financial obligations and, and a lot of the things. They had to go to South Africa to to shoot it, and I think it really works to the film's uh, advantage. I, I, it, it really is an an, uh, an interesting film. The new Blu-ray from from Screen Factory. I mean, I mean, they uh, New Line released it on DVD and Laserdisc, but it was and Laserdisc it was full screen. It was not uh, matted. It was not widescreen. Uh, the DVD was was uh, 16 by 9, but it wasn't the director's cut. And they even showed the cut scenes in a in a featurette. Uh, this new Scream Factory is a 4K transfer of the uh, unrated version, and it looks beautiful. This this new uh, Scream Factory Blu-ray it slipped out quietly at the very end of 2018, and it's really the 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 the, the release to have. Um, it has a new 4K transfer, which I, I always felt the film looked beautiful. I mean, even on Laserdisc. Even on VHS, I, I felt it had a real stylized, beautiful, beautifully lit, beautiful. I mean, the the outdoors, like there's that scene where they're walking over the uh, the little co covered bridge next to their their um, to their houses. The uh, Ted Levine character and his uh, brother-in-law character, and there is that scene where they're walking over the water, talking about what's happening in the town and. And there's all these lighting elements, the the murky uh, interior of the of the of the factory with uh, the shoots of steam kind of going on and off. And, I mean, it's a beautiful, wonderfully uh, stylized film, and the Blu-ray really shows it off. The extras in the Blu-ray they're not plentiful, but this is the this is quality over quantity with this Blu-ray because first of all you get uh, of course you get the trailers you get a TV trailer you, you get a theatrical trailer though I think there were some TV trailers that I saw that that are not on this thing There's, there was a lot of trailers the marketing for this film was really thorough um, TV trailers theatrical trailers uh, you get a you get a nice series of out of uh, behind the scenes. Uh, video footage that I think William Hooper shot, uh, shooting scenes, shooting um, uh, the uh, various scenes throughout the film, mainly in the interior of the uh, the laundry set. The, they show how they shot the scene where there was that scene where Ted Levine uh, backs is is inspecting the mangler and he backs up uh, he, his back is to the mangler and part of his his coat gets uh, stuck in the mangler and he almost gets eaten up by the mangler. They sh they show how they shot that. They go through some of the special effects. Toby, we see, we see Toby Hooper on the set. We see Robert England on the set. There's also a great Robert England interview uh, where you know Robert England's a great interview subject because he'll he's very thorough. He goes he goes you know about the working in South Africa, shooting the film in South Africa. Um, uh, his makeup, which was apparently one of the most intense makeup jobs he ever uh, did, it was five hours of makeup every day to to become to transform into Bill Gartley. 
uh, he, he goes, he just, he talks about Toby Hooper, he talks about the whole thing, uh, it's a real great interview, and then there's a commentary track, uh, with, uh, Nathaniel Thompson, uh, moderating, and, uh, the screenwriter of the film. The film has many credited screenwriters, but really it was just mainly this one guy that Toby Hooper knew, who there were there were a lot of scripts circling around, but Stephen King had uh, had approval of the scripts, and Stephen King kept turning down all these scripts. So they pitched this idea uh, of a way to transform the short story into a, a feature length film. This screenwriter pitched it to Toby Hooper, came up with a pitch, wrote the script, and apparently that was a lot of his work. Though a, a lot of people, a lot of different, there were a lot of different screenplay drafts, and they were they even talk about in the film how there were some, there was some uh, on set uh, rewrites and stuff. It was so it was a, it was a film that was really in flux. But he gives a lot of, of background information on the film, on the making of the film, on the characters, on shooting in South Africa, on how uh, so, I mean the the lead the lead actress in the film, Sherry, she's totally totally redubbed and I mean the film does it really pulls off this it doesn't it you know there were a lot of films like in the 60s and the early 70s that were like shot in the UK and they tried to pretend like they were in North America and they were not successful this film is successful you don't really feel that it's uh, it shot in South Africa it, it just has that out of place feel and none of the I mean, the the only place where I felt that the accents were a little out out of balance was the were those two uh, truck drivers who you know who are carrying the uh, the refrigerator. They they seem like they were a little bit like their accents were a little bit. Mm, I don't know about that, but I mean everybody else. I mean the sound design of the film, the ADR is like you would never know that somebody was completely dubbed. It was it's not like you know some of those um, uh, European films where you know everybody you know like the Italian films. Where, I mean it's not like Italian dubbing. It, it they really did an, an incredible sound sound design job. Uh, on the film, but he goes through that. I mean, he 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 has. There's all these. It, it's it's a wonderful. There's barely a, a a moment of silence in this commentary track. It's full of. I mean, if you wanted, to, there were so many. There were so many things about the the Mangler we didn't know after all these years. So, it's a wonderful that this that this that this new Blu-ray really answers all your questions. Uh, a real sleeper of a horror film, The Mangler, uh, a really cool movie, and you really should check it out. And this new Blu-ray from Scream Factory, uh, it's uh, reasonably priced and uh, a great release.